Welcome to Life as God Intended. I'm Don. Thanks for joining me for this broadcast today when we'll be discussing standing strong in the face of rejection and how to find love when it matters the most. Let me begin by posing a question I think that we all can relate to. In fact, somebody actually asked me this question in counseling, uh, how to face this kind of a circumstance. And here was their question. How do you stay in an environment where no one seems to like or approve of you? Well, certainly rejection is something we all experience. And when we do, it leaves us feeling isolated, unworthy, and hurt. Uh, whether that rejection comes from a friend, a partner, uh, the workplace, or even a family or church member, rejection can deeply wound us because you and I were made for connection and love. We weren't made for rejection. But here's the powerful truth. Jesus himself faced rejection and he fully understands the pain that you and I endure when we're facing rejective experiences. As Isaiah 53 verse 3 reminds us, he was despised and rejected of men. And yet, Jesus shows us that the way to overcome rejection is not through attempting to earn approval, but rather by resting in the unwavering love of God. So what's the key to finding strength in God's love in the face of rejective circumstances? The key to overcoming rejection is love but it's God's unchanging love. It's not human love because human love is often conditional. God's love is steadfast, unwavering, never dependent on our performance. Thank God. Though you may face rejection, and obviously you will, you are never forsaken. And here's how to embrace God's love when you don't feel like you're loved through those most difficult times. I want you to imagine at those moments God's love like a protective umbrella on a rainy day. While the rain, which in this sense we'll visualize as rejective experiences, may keep falling, it may keep coming, his love, this umbrella of love, shields us from being drenched by the pain. Think of this, just like a phone needs regular recharging, we need to continually draw strength from God's love to live as he intended. It is an ongoing relationship, isn't it? No matter what others may say or do, his love keeps us secure and strengthens us to face each day. But we've got to continue to keep participating with him, deriving from him, walking by faith with him. So you might ask, how do you stand alone? Well, standing alone is only possible with God's strength. There are moments when we do feel utterly alone. Even Jesus experienced this isolation. He was rejected in his own hometown and by many others, including those he came to save. Just like a lighthouse, you and I can stand strong, not because of our own strength, but because of the solid foundation 
on which we are built, God himself. Psalm 62 and verse 2 tells us that God is our rock and fortress and the source of our strength. Let me give you some practical applications of how to overcome rejection. Everybody's always wanting the practical steps, as it were. And although there aren't steps, I'm going to give you three practical ways to ground yourself in God's love in those moments when you're feeling that tidal wave of rejection. Number one, practice the presence of God. What do I mean by that? Actively live out your identity in Christ, setting your mind on his truth as a step of faith. In other words, take one step of faith after another. Live in the presence of God. Don't lose sight of who you are in Christ. Let me maybe illustrate it like this. When negative thoughts arise, and obviously they do, and they can be compounded when we are being rejected, I want you to picture yourself pushing aside that negativity and embracing and making room for God's embrace of you. Make room for his love. And it's in those moments that it's critical that you make an affirmation. Make the affirmation that obviously Christ is living within you, he is with you, and his love is what defines you, not the negativity or the criticism of others. So it's important that you affirm God's truth. And sometimes a practical way of, of doing that is to speak aloud, speak out loud truths from Scripture, like, I am accepted in Christ, Ephesians 1, 6. Confess it with your mouth. Speak it out loud. There's something significant about verbalizing the truth and embracing the truth, particularly at those moments when you're being tempted otherwise. And then visualize. Recite affirmations. This is a powerful, practical exercise. Get a mirror, stand in front of it, and begin to speak the truth. Simply speak the truth of your identity in Christ. Speak the truth that God is speaking to you. Affirm it. And as you speak it to yourself, standing in front of the mirror. And finally, another practical application would be to, to seek healthy community. Surround yourself with people who value and encourage you. Nothing quite like a, a Christ-centered friendship that can reinforce God and, and can affirm you and, and uh, say positive things towards you. But how do we deal with kind of the guilt and the shame that sometimes we feel in the midst of these rejective experiences that we all face? Because let's be honest, depending on uh, your understanding of who you are in Christ in the midst of rejection, you could sometimes feel guilt and shame. Is it, is it valid? Well, it's crucial first to distinguish between these two words because guilt relates to our actions while shame strikes at the heart of our identity, making us feel fundamentally unworthy. Some scriptures that you might look up for further reference on this subject is 1 John 1, 9, which deals with forgiveness, and then Romans chapter 8 and verse 1, which deals with the fact there is no condemnation in Christ. One deals with guilt, the other deals with shame. In Christ, you are a new creation, no longer defined by your past, failures, or by others' opinions. 2 Corinthians 5.17 declares that. And as a result, shame loses its grip when you embrace your identity as God's beloved son or daughter. And this is how 
you can begin to overcome self-condemnation. It's one thing to be condemned by others, but many of us are riddled with this self-condemnation that we continue to hold on to and believe, which is unmerited because of who you are in Christ. The enemy wants to keep us trapped in self-condemnation. But in Christ, we are forgiven. We are made to new. Look up Colossians chapter 1 and verse 22. God's love frees us from this cycle of defeat, breaking every chain of isolation and shame. Paul prays for you and for me, Ephesus chapter 3 and verses 17 to 19, speaks of being rooted and grounded in Christ's love so that we can fully grasp its depth. There's, there's more to his love than the initial love that you've experienced on any one occasion. And so I want you to imagine being rooted like a tree, sustained by the love of God in every season, and you're gonna continually be rooted in his love and those roots will grow as you receive and allow God to reveal the expanse of his love for you. And as we understand his love, we are freed from rejection. We're able to walk in the life that God intended for us to experience life as God intended as we talk about on this channel. But before we conclude this broadcast, I'd like to discuss with us one of the most hurtful rejections that we can experience, and that's dealing with hurtful family members. Rejection is especially painful when it comes from family. And here are some practical ways to handle such situations with grace. First of all, remember that you are anchored in God's love. Remind yourself that your worth comes from God, not the hurtful things that a family member may be saying to you or accusing you of. Secondly, respond with love, even in the midst of being rejected. Instead of reacting, which is so common, and, and we are tempted to obviously react, instead of reacting, calmly affirm love without taking on false blame. This is what Paul's talking about in Romans chapter 12 and verse 18. And so it's at those moments, I want you to imagine responding with kindness when hurtful words are being spoken. You might say something like, I'm sorry that you feel that way. I do care and love you. So it kind of defers, it doesn't receive the rejective, hurtful things, but it also responds in love. And then third, set boundaries. Guard your heart with healthy boundaries. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 talks about that. And so boundaries are a line symbolizing respect and, and care, and you don't have to continually place yourself in that kind of abusive situation. Even though you may have to live with certain family members, you don't have to continue to submit yourself to that constant verbal abuse. And then finally, pray for them. Pray for their healing. Pray that their hearts and their minds would be transformed by the love of God. And pray for God to also work in you that you'll have the patience and, and that you'll be open to allowing for the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit in your life in those most difficult moments. In conclusion, living in a world where you face rejection is incredibly hard. But remember, you're not on your own. You're never alone. God's love defines you. You are 
fully known by him. You are fully accepted by him and you are deeply loved by him. And it is in his love that you can face rejection with strength and grace. If you lose sight of that, you will be discouraged. You will find yourself depressed. You will find yourself tempted to revert to flesh patterns of sin in the face of rejection. So at those times, a practical thing to embrace is, is picture Jesus standing right with you in the midst of that rejective moment. Picture him with his arms around your shoulders, softly reaffirming you. Listen to what he says as he speaks to you at the moment that you're in the receiving end of this rejection, when he says, I love you, you are mine, and that's enough. So whenever you feel the sting of rejection, remember this moment with Jesus by your side. You are never truly alone. Let his love be your strength and foundation. May I call you to action? If this message has encouraged you and resonated in your heart, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and share this message with others who might also be encouraged by it. And please consider leaving me your comments and questions below. I love hearing from you. And also, if there are topics that you would like for me to address, let me know what they are in the comment section below. Until next time, my prayer for you is that you experience life as God intended, even in the face of rejection.